want to play you something now that was uh, brought to my attention over the weekend. There were various parts of uh, social media that it was on. And this is a woman who is, and uh, sounds, uh, certainly has an American or North American accent anyway, challenging a Metropolitan Police officer on the fact that there are swastikas on posters in various pro-Palestinian protesters uh, what they're carrying on the protest that was over the weekend. There was a pro-Israel uh, protest as well over the weekend and uh, it's really interesting their conversation is kind of shocking, well it is shocking as well, when the officer talks about the context of a swastika. Now there are ways in which a swastika, let's face it, can in theory uh, be a, a peaceful symbol, so for example at a Hindu wedding, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a very, very uh, strong view here that the swastika on this uh, occasion, if you're carrying one at a pro-Palestinian protest, you are uh, being offensive to Jewish people. We'll talk to someone from a major uh, Jewish organisation in a minute, but let's just listen to this uh, exchange or part of this exchange with the, with the North American protester. In what context is a swastika not anti-Semitic and disrupting the public order? That was my question. I don't have an in-depth knowledge of science and symbols. I know the swastika was used by the Nazi party during uh, their inception and the period of them being in power in Germany in the 1930s. I am aware of that. I just can't believe this conversation is actually uh, So what, what, what exactly are you confused about? What, what I'm confused you? is how you don't, in what context yeah. a swastika is not anti-Semitic. This is what I want to know. Because, again... Well, I suppose, to some, I don't know uh, how... <laughs> Everybody would feel about that song. I don't know how everybody would feel about that. Maybe they're just facts, perhaps. Maybe they're just facts that it's not about the context. If someone puts a swastika at, at a pro-Palestinian protest against a pro-Israeli protest, presumably, I think any, anyone will know that that is a reference to Nazism. Chris in West, Western Supermare has been in touch. He says, I appreciate arresting a protester would cause a big scene, but they have a job and they should have taken the swastika banner from the person. Well, Gary Mond is with me. He is chairman of the National Jewish Assembly. We'll go to Mike Neville in a second, who's a former Metropolitan Police Detective Chief Inspector. Gary, what do you make of this? I think it's disgraceful. Of course it's disgraceful. We have a situation where a lot of people do not actually understand how objectionable a swastika is, not just to Jewish people, but to the community as a whole. A swastika is a symbol, not just of Nazi Germany, but also of the Holocaust, where six million people were methodically murdered on an industrial scale. And what is particularly obscene is what some of these demonstrators are trying to do is to try to link, use the swastika to link the Holocaust to what's happening in Gaza, where there is absolutely no comparison whatsoever. I totally agree with that. And also, it's not just the six million Jews who died. There are many more people as well. Uh, the Jewish people in the Holocaust are, of course, what we uh, remember and, and think about. But there are so many others that are communists, gay people, so many others who the Nazis just didn't like and exterminated systematically. Uh, Mike Neville is a former Metropolitan Police Detective Chief Inspector. Uh, Mike, what on earth is going on here in the Metropolitan Police? I mean, this is so straightforward. And still, they're equivocating. This officer is saying, oh, it's about the context. Why can't they just make a decision and stick to it? I absolutely agree, uh, Peter. It's disgraceful. I and mean, one thing we can one one thing we can take from this though, the person was arrested. So whilst we can see that uh, video, and the officer just comes up with some waffles on about uh, the 1930s and the like. Uh, and at one point, a chief inspector is behind him when he's doing this. If you watch the uh, the full video, so I don't know why a senior officer didn't intervene at that mm. point, but. It's simply not good enough what he's saying, but the good thing that did come out of it, of course, the Metano saying that the person with the swastika uh, was arrested, because these, these marches, in my view, are not pro-Palestinian. They're simply anti-Israel and anti-Jewish, and it's completely unacceptable that Jewish people are not feeling safe in London, it's there, just there will be people, enough. Mike. There will be people on those marches who say, "Like, I just want peace in the Middle East." And they're maybe naive. I think they are naive. I wouldn't want to be within a country mile of anyone carrying a swastika on a on a on a, in a any form of protest. And people know those people are on that protest. Yet still, they join it. And the police really do not appear, in my view, to be policing this properly or fairly, Mike. Yes, I, I, I agree with you. I've said time and time on these programs that. There's this sort of, the, the police should be impartial. And what tends to happen is if something's you know, like sort of left-leaning cause, whether it's uh, pro-Palestine or uh, Black Lives Matter or something like that, it's policed in a very different way than uh, Millwall football club, uh, fans or, or anti-vaxxers. And, and this lack of uh, tough policing against people who have completely unacceptable signs 
uh, has emboldened these uh, protesters. And then we have the ridiculous, uh, uh, ridiculous sight a couple of weeks ago of somebody holding up a sign saying Hamas are terrorists, which is the government's position on Hamas. And it's, it's also and that factual. Person's arrested. And yeah, it's factual. And the sign, the, the police officer sort of screwed up the sign uh, on, on camera. So these, as I say, what's happened is these protesters know they can get away with it and continually push the limits. Mm. And, and I say my concern is for my uh, Jewish friends and the Jewish uh, communities as a whole in London that they should not feel unsafe. It's not good enough. There's a lot more that can be done. The Metropolitan Police have given us a statement. They say this clip is a short excerpt of what was a 10-minute conversation with an officer. During the full conversation, the officer establishes that the woman the person was concerned about had already been arrested for a public order offence in relation to a placard. The officer then offer, uh, offered to arrange for other officers to attend and accompany the woman to identify any other persons she was concerned about amongst the protesters, but after turning to speak to his supervisor, she had unfortunately left. Uh, I'm sure that's the case, and I believe the Metropolitan Police, but nonetheless, it shouldn't take someone challenging the Metropolitan Police, Gary. It shouldn't say, hey, look over there, there's someone with a swastika, there's someone chanting from the river to the sea, there's someone who is doing something deeply offensive and illegal. The police should not just stand by. They say, oh, we'll get it on CCTV and we'll get them later. I don't know if they do. Well, you're quite right. Uh, the police need to be proactive rather than reactive in these situations where there are going to be circumstances where people are going to behave that way, they should be ready on the lookout for that and act immediately. But that said, there's something else that government can actually do. Government can follow Germany and make the use of the swastika illegal. And you, you that think that help. should happen? I do think that should happen, actually. Yes, obviously there are going to be certain exceptions, like mm -hmm. Hindu weddings, and where it's clearly not meant in, in, in an yeah. anti-Semitic manner. But those exceptions are very, very few and far between. Generally, the use of the swastika is anti-Jewish and fosters Jew hatred, and that's what needs to be stopped. Um, an interesting perspective here from Mark in Southampton, who's texted me to say, great show, Peter, 99% of the people on these hate marches share the same views. They're also anti-British. Do you think it's anti-British to go on a pro-Palestinian march? I think it's becoming seen as increasingly so, particularly if one looks at the deeper analysis of the situation and realise that what Israel is trying to do is actually in the interest of Britain and the West as well. Getting rid of Although Hamas... Although they've had a lot of... A lot, I mean, I totally agree we should get rid of Hamas, no doubt about that. They've had a lot of criticism from Britain and America around what Israel has been up to and the, the deaths of many civilians in, in Gaza. Those criticisms come from the British and American governments. They don't come from ordinary British and American citizens, many of whom take Israel's side in this conflict they realize that it's first the saturday people then the sunday people and it's in their interest it's in british citizens interest in american citizens interest to finish off hamas um penny in essex has been in touch says hi peter i'm amazed that, that the policeman didn't real realize the swastika is anti-semitic it's anti-jewish i think the jewish community have had more than enough now um, mike i mean surely this is just a basic level of knowledge knowing that i mean he did of course know that the nazis used the swastika and was their symbol but he didn't seem to be rushing to make a series of arrests uh, we, we know the person the person was talking about to him was arrested, but there are far more people whose, at the very least, placards should be taken off them, I think, Mike. Absolutely. So this, this officer, he said, uh, if you watch the clip, he, he said, I can't move, I can't leave my post, but of course you're equipped with a radio, so you can radio yeah. a supervisor and say, look, this, this complaint's been made to me. And I want uh, what has been done about it. And as, we, as I said, the fortunately, the person was arrested but it could this could this whole incident could have been dealt with in a much more professional manner the officer stands at one point guzzling coffee and i i just think it's just unprofessional and, and the waffle it just does it sends out the wrong messages and and the whole marches have sent out the wrong messages and there needs to be some tougher policing uh, they need to draft in more officers than draft in more officers because it's uh, it's just not good and once well, again, the, well there did seem police, to be plenty of officers there they just weren't doing the job they were meant to do perhaps